People in Taiwan, whether you're a local or a foreigner, like to make the trip around the entire island at least once. It's kind of like a pilgrimage. That means sometimes you only get a single night to spend time in each city that you get to visit because you have to take holidays to do these big trips. And those have to be at least a week in most cases. And those only come every so often. Now, normally I like to get around using a motorbike or a scooter, but unfortunately, Taiwan suffers from one inconvenient problem. A tropical depression that formed east of the Philippines has strengthened into a tropical storm. Tropical storm Danas is very likely to track north to make landfall in Taiwan. The strongest storm recorded in the world this year is now making landfall in Taiwan. It is called Super Typhoon Maranti. Forecasters warn that Typhoon Mankut, a much more powerful storm, is still on track to directly hit southeastern Taiwan over the weekend. Yeah, it's fatally, frustratingly, fantastically, and frequently forcefully fucked by typhoons. So this time I'm actually going to be taking a car, and that's going to help me stay, number one, dry, and two, it's going to help me go further and faster. So I guess despite all my rage, I am just a, a YouTuber in a cage. Won't be as fun, but oh well. Too bad the weather is against me on this trip. So, Kaohsiung, 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 Kao, whatever, fuck it, is a southern city and it's the second largest by area on the island. And in this video, I figured I'd show you guys what you could do uh, in a night in this totally alluring port city. Trust me, it's totally worth checking out. So I just got into Kaohsiung now, and um, I'm gonna be honest with you, the drive here from Taichung to Kaohsiung is not that interesting. It reminds me a lot of my home country of Canada, where, yeah, sure, a lot of it is pretty, but for the most part, it's not that nice. There's no mountains or water to look at on the way here. That's all on the other side of the island, which is why I'm taking a car, is because that drive is actually really good. But if you're just gonna stay on this coast, the east coast, or the west coast, whichever coast I'm on right now, <laughs> can't think, um, I would just take a train because it's quicker. This is rather terrifying. I think the further you get away from Taipei, the more laws and rules of driving start becoming more of like suggestions. And I think the problem Kaohsiung has, and I don't know if this is actually true, but something I've kind of noticed is that they have a lot more, what the fuck, scooters than other cities in Taiwan. And what it's kind of like is like if you put a bunch of stones in a jar, and then you fill it full of sand, you watch the sand get around all the big stones, get the bottom of the jar. That's a bit what driving in Kaohsiung is like, because you do have to mind the scooters and make sure you don't hit any of them. And Kaohsiung also has a lot of old people, um, so at least I'm noticing on scooters, and there's a lot of old people that sh shouldn't be riding scooters, which is another terrifying part of driving here. But um, it is one thing you'll notice the first that time you come to Kaohsiung is the driving here is just atrocious <laughs> compared to other parts of the island. That was a scooter accident. Did you get that, cameraman? Okay, so this hotel only cost me about 1180 NT, which is near as makes a difference, about 37 USD, which is pretty good. Yes, it's a little bit small, but it has a bed, and that gets the job done. Uh, and it is in the city center, which is kind of what I wanted. You can get something more expensive if that's your thing. Bathroom's nice, and that's one important thing about Taiwan. I find a lot of these older hotels have really terrible bathrooms, but uh, anyways, I fancy a beer. Let's go see what Ty, uh, Kaohsiung's nightlife has to offer. My first stop has to be, like most cities in Taiwan, a night market. The closest one to me was called Liuhe. It's a small market only occupying a single street, but busy nonetheless. Places like this makes you glad you're not an aquatic animal because the Taiwanese will absolutely eat you. Have the gods no mercy. Westerners usually live in hyper-hygienic areas that virtually eliminate any harm to your intestines. If you're new to the island, then be prepared for that change because you'll be eating fresh from the ocean, cooked on a grill, monsters of the sea, and there's no telling what that'll do to your body. If you want to travel prosy style, make sure that you're so completely useless at eating seafood that the master has to come and tell you how to do it and then take those clear instructions and fuck it up even more. Now it's on my hand. I'm messing this up. <laughs> Want to know what goes really well with beer is oysters. 
personally love them. Anyways, back in China, they used to add like a ton of garlic over the top. And back home, I don't know that we eat garlic with lobsters, usually a little bit of Tabasco and stuff, not lobsters, oysters, sorry. Give it a roll, super good. I think the feel of Taiwan, if you really want it, like, cause it's so famous for its night markets and stuff, is you sit outside of one, at one of these round tables in these plastic chairs and you eat food and drink a ton of beer with all the people going by and there's just so much, it's so stimulating, but it's really cool. Night markets allow you to try lots of different kinds of food because it's cheap, plentiful, and portion sizes are kept usually pretty small, although not always up to the highest quality. And one of my favorite things to eat ever, uh, ever which is like mutton, sticks of mutton. These are looking a little bit pathetic to be honest with you, but I love mutton so much, I'm gonna give it uh, a quick shot. I got it from that night market. It's below average, to be honest. <laughs> if you're someone who likes mutton, you can do a lot better than this. Let me just small and chewy and kind of pathetic. <laughs> that's the thing about travel on a lot of travel channels is that they show you the best foods to eat, which makes sense because that's what you want. But I think the beautiful thing about it is like trying to go around and find the stuff that you like and don't like. And this is one of the things I really would recommend. <laughs> street meat. Once you're done pickling your liver in Taiwan beer and street food, check out Gao Xiong's romantic side. China, oh yeah, it might have Dick Mountain, but Kaohsiung has Love River, which snakes its sexual body all up inside this city. Oh yeah, baby. I'll say this about this fucking river. I've been walking it for ages, and I swear to God, I know it's Love River, but love itself doesn't last as long as this friggin' thing does. It's super long, but it's very pretty. I mean, you got boats going by and stuff, and couples. It's actually a fantastic place for a first date. I would, I would, I'd give it a shot. Maybe rent a bicycle, though. <laughs> Want to impress your date? Look no further. Sit down, relax, and be prepared to have the local talent serenade you with Gaoxiong's sexiest music. Since coming to uh, Lover's Love River, whatever this place is called, is that Gaoxiong is stuck in this weird place, or sort of in between. I'm going to try and explain that for a second. See, when you go to somewhere like Taipei, you know it's a big city. You can tell it's a big city. It's, it's got, you know, that sort of international city feel, something like Shenzhen or Shanghai or Tokyo or Seoul or something like that. Taichung, where I live, is a big city. It's one of the major cities here in Taiwan. However, it doesn't have that same feel. There's lots of parks, lots of, uh, it's a, well, like, slow pace of life and a good place to raise a family, good place to retire. It doesn't really have a nightlife. It kind of loses that big city of appeal. Kaohsiung is stuck right in the middle of that. You've got Love River, which is like this nice place where you come on a first date. But then you've also actually got like a nightlife. You know what I mean? You've got that big city feel. So it's like if Taipei and Taichung had a baby with a higher temperature, that would be that would be Kaohsiung. Uh, this is the only way I know how to explain it. At least that's the feeling I get from it so far. This is Love River. Highly recommend checking out. Speaking of dates, I'm going to meet my next one, a fellow YouTuber. Let's go see that. I am here at uh, Lighthouse Bar. Is that what this place is called? Bar Lighthouse and Grill. Bar and Grill. Pretty much a pub. Um, a Canadian one at that, I believe. Well, and, yeah, uh, there's a huge Canadian flag right behind us. So I think that probably gives it away. Yeah, but anyways, uh, I'm here with a local superstar and fellow Canadian YouTuber. Uh, barely. What is this place? <laughs> one thing I love about Kaohsiung is like, you guys actually have a nightlife, and especially a foreigner one too, which is something you can really can come to appreciate. And I understand you're coming to a new place, you want to have like local stuff and stuff like that. But it's so cool that you guys have poutine. You guys have like three different places that have poutine, like a Canadian dish. Well, I, I didn't realize that other cities in Taiwan didn't have that. I don't think I don't think that we do. At least not in Taichung. Because my best friend lives in Kaohsiung. He's lived here for. I live in Taichung. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> we only met a couple months ago. We're only lovers. Ago. We're not best friends. I get it. Let's not make it more than what it is. We're working our way out, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> so, okay, a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's been living in Kaohsiung for a couple years before I got here. And he used to live in Taipei. And whenever he told me, Wes, you got to move to Taipei, I'm like, I don't know. I went to visit him there. I didn't really love it. But then as soon as he moved to Kaohsiung, I was like, okay, maybe that's somewhere where I could actually live. It seems like a very livable city. It has a big foreigner community. It's right on the ocean. The mountains aren't too, too far away. And as you said, like, there are a lot of pubs. There's some clubs. It has a good nightlife scene. There's great people here. I think the best thing about Kaohsiung is almost all of my friends have a hobby. Like, mm. 
They all have something that they do besides teaching or besides their job. They play ultimate frisbee or they're photographers or they want to make YouTube videos like I do. I think Kaohsiung is a perfect place where you can live, work, save money and also do what you want to do. Like follow your passions and have extracurricular activities. So this is this is not a sponsored or paid ad at all. It, it, I promise you it isn't. Don't laugh at you. <laughs> it's, it's not. not it's, it's not. It's not. It's just the point of this it's video cool. is that you guys know where to go in Kaohsiung. And if you think that Taiwanese food is literally a pile of horse shit, which is fine, it's not. But if you think that way and you want Western food, this is the place to go. Uh, and especially if you just, I mean, this deal, ex explain this, this, this deal, because this is really something. Well, it, it's not really a deal. Uh, well, basically, a deal. you just come in <coughs> and let your friends know you're here on social media, check in, and we'll give you a free shot. No strings attached, no minimum charge, no nothing. Uh, if you are in here, you like the place, you love the place, you want to tell your friends or, about it or the world about it, uh, check us out on Google, review us on Google, explaining why you like the lighthouse, and we'll give you a free Agarbaugh. So again, some people like tequila, some people like Jagger bombs. You know, once you've given us a review on Google, you can't do it again. But uh, anytime you check in, anytime you come here and just check in, we'll always give you a shot of tequila. You know, I I I don't even. So we're gonna check in, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's already. I mean, in in because he's so nice, he's already he's been very very nice. right. Very I don't even like promote my own channel that well, and that's the point of my fucking channel. I gotta take notes. Every time you subscribe to my channel, Wes buys me a shot. <laughs> That's fantastic. So yeah, just come here and do that. And uh, again, like I know it's not like a local thing. I know that uh, if you're here in Taiwan for the first time, maybe it's not something you. Well, maybe it is. Maybe you want to see sort of where, uh, the more like foreign community, but uh, that's definitely something to think about. Lighthouse. It's fantastic. Yeah, well, I think I think it's got a good mix. I think you said this earlier off camera. It's got a fantastic mix between uh, foreign culture, we'll say, or foreign environment and Taiwanese people. Because you got Taiwanese and foreigners coming to the same place and hanging out. So if you want to meet both, mm -hmm. that's great. Again, not a paid ad. I just fucking love it here, and I think every, a, a ton of other people should check it out. It's cool. Anyways, that's Kaohsiung, a city definitely worth checking out, regardless of your reason why you're here in Taiwan. Go see it, it ha it's, it's so much fun. And I had a great time uh, with Eric, the manager there at that pub lighthouse. Me, him, and Wes drank well into the early hours of the morning talking about all kinds of stuff. I even did a live stream with Eric, I liked him so much. And uh, so did the audience. They've been demanding another video with them, but I don't know the next time we'll be in Kaohsiung. I haven't seen or talked to him since, but we'll see how that goes. Anyways, if you like this kind of travel style video, uh, let me know, I, I enjoyed making it, but that's what you can do in a single night in Kaohsiung. There's a lot more you can do. There's a lot more to that city that I didn't cover in this video for the sake of time. Again, it is just one night. Stay positive, keep your stick on the ice. Uh, catch you guys in the next one. I've got Instagram at prosy underscore SR if you want to see more of my daily life, and I've also got Patreon if you want to see some extra content there. Catch you guys in the next one.